Hey guys, welcome to ITS Tactical. Today we're going to be reviewing the Honey Stove. And the Honey Stove is a multi-fuel, multi-pot cooking set. It comes in this handy pouch here and assembles in these pieces. And I'll be taking you through this stove today and show you kind of the versatility of it and the multi-function that the Honey Stove brings to the table. Now the Honey Stove is also known as the Bee's Knees. So without further ado, let's get started. So basically what you have are, divide this up into the pieces here, you have five sides, one front burner door, and three different bases. Well actually you have one base and you have two cooking rings. So essentially what this is is a hexagon uh, pattern cooking stove that you assemble, and if you look at these pieces here. They all have these interlocking sides as well as the different levels that you can fit things into. So I'll explain kind of the, the features of those once we get this thing put together. So there's two configurations you can use this in. You can either use it in a hexagon shape or you can use it in a square shape only using four of the sides here. So first of all I'm gonna put this together in the traditional hexagon shape here. So you've got your three sides, and these just interlock, just like so. And what's great about this is it's strong. It's not going to fall apart on you, and I'll show you once we get this together, that it does stay pretty sturdy. So this is the base. We're going to insert this in here, and if you look at these sides, there's one side that doesn't have a tab, and that faces the front, which is the fire door, which is where you're going to put your fuel in from. And we're going to insert this on the very bottom here, wrapping the other sides around it, just like so. So there's the base, and here's the fire door. We're just going to slide this in here. Okay, so now we have our completed hexagon shaped honey stove and you can see you've got now got a space to add your tinder just like so and you can stuff it right in there and use, a, use it as a wood burning stove. Now the great thing about the honey stove is that with these two different levels here you can add this ring in the center and you can hold thing, this is actually a trangia ring so if you have a little trangia stove like this it actually fits right in there in that ring. And as I mentioned, these different levels on the side here, the different slots, will fit this piece here, and it will hold this at any level you want within the honey stove. So before we get into uh, the versatility as far as the Trangia burner level goes, let's, we're going to set this up as a wood burning stove and see how well we can do with it here. And then this top ring is great for just setting on the top obviously and that just lays right on there so now you've got a place to set your pots at this is a uh, this is the cup from the mini TI cook set or the mini solo cook set I'm sorry from uh, Snow Peak so I've got some water here we're gonna actually give this a burn test here in a minute but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add some wood in here Also got a little dryer lint. I'm going to use to start this. And we'll build this up and we'll get a fire going. This is just a fire steel I'm going to use. Let me actually uh, turn this around here. So we can try to throw this right in. There we go. We'll 
we'll let that get going and we'll be right back. Okay, I'd say we have that going pretty good now. I'm going to take our little mini solo cook set top here. Put in my two cups of water. And we will see how long that takes to come to a boil. Be right back. Okay, I've got about 6 minutes and 35 seconds, and our water is a rolling, roaring boil. So that's a great time for a little wood-burning stove. So let me cool off this fire. We'll uh, wrap everything up, and we'll get back to uh, telling you about the other features of the honey stove. Be right back. Okay, so now that we talked about the wood-burning aspects of the honey stove, and you got to see it in action, let's put this thing back together, and we'll show you some of the other features that it has. So, using the fire door again, and the six sides, five sides, sorry, I'm going to assemble this again. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the levels within each of these sides actually fit a trangia lip very well. So if you notice, that actually holds a trangia right in there. Now the great thing about this is, is you can use it with four sides instead of six. Just like so. And now you've got a base to cook your, to cook with your trangia. Now, if you don't want to opt for the four sides, you can go back to six. And before we get too more in-depth, we're going to reassemble this thing. And we're going to show you what it's like to cook with the trangia. And we'll do a little boil test with that as well. Now, the good thing about this is that the honey stove acts as a windscreen as well, which really helps out. So we'll assemble our sides again. And uh, as you can see, since we've burned wood in it, it's turning a nice honey color. Maybe that's why they call it the honey stove. I'm not quite sure. Put our fire door back on here. And it doesn't matter which direction you start assembling this from. All these pieces interlock very well and easily. Actually, before we put that on, we're going to put this ring inside. And this is the ring that actually holds the Trangia stove. And if you can see, there is a, uh, a side here that does not feature the little insert. And that is the side that's going to go towards the front. Now that we've got that together, we've got a space for our Trangia to sit into. Assemble the fire door. Good to go. So now we have a configuration for the Trangia stove right in there. And as you can see, this is a very sturdy stove. It's not it's not going to fall apart on you. I can toss it up in the air, it's not going to fall apart, which is great. So we've got our little burner plate down there. Get our Trangia. And what's great about this is that you still have room, even when your Trangia is in, to activate the simmer ring. And on a Trangia, it's got the simmer ring on the top, so you can actually change the volume of fuel or burn coming out of it. So I happen to have some fuel here. Fill this up. This is actually just denatured alcohol. A ounce of fuel. I'm 
Now you can also use something like the Vargo Triad stove. It's an alcohol, another alcohol stove. Or you could use a traditional tin can stove like this or penny stove, what have you. Um, and that can just be actually set on um, this level or you can actually just set it right down on the bottom if you don't have the, the Trangio ring on there. So let's get this thing lit up. Get our water ready. So again, we'll do two cups of water. Get that ready to go there. Now one thing to, uh, to note real quick about this is that as this gets hot and you've used it for the first time and it, the stainless steel that it's made out of gets hot, it's going to warp a little bit. It's going to bend. Um, as you might have seen when the water was boiling on the wood burning part of this when we were using it earlier, uh, you could see the cup kind of tilting around a little bit. And that's just something to note with this. Um, you can always bend it back into shape if it gets severely contorted, but um, one thing that to, to note is that it will do that. So get this thing going here. I think that is going. Yep, there we go. So let's get our two cups of water back on. And you can see that it's still kind of shaking a little bit. That's because the ground that it's on isn't completely stable either, which is not a good thing. You should always have level flat ground, but this is just going to be our test here. So let's get our watch going again here. And the stopwatch, definitely a lot of heat going. And here we go. We'll go ahead and time the Chanji burn for two cups of water. We'll be right back. Okay, it looks like we're going to call it at 638. We've got a uh, boil going in our water. So, this was just a secondary method you can use. You can use the Trangia burner on a level like this to boil your water. And the great thing about this is that it's got even more options than this. You could actually come along with um, something like a fast fire tab or an S-bit tab, uh, put that on the lower level, and you can actually lower this top grill. So you could place the lower grill, or sorry, the top grill a little lower to the uh, where the flame would be on a S-bit tab, a fast fire tab, or even something like a uh, a coke can stove. Now, let me remove this here so that's not too hot set that there in the snow to cool down and we're just actually we're just about out of fuel there so let me take this top grill off and cooling down a little bit luckily it's uh, 16 degrees out here today I believe so <laughs> we uh, got some uh, definitely got some cool weather here for it now make sure this is cool Move our Trangia. Now, one thing I want to show you too is if we can take off. It's amazing how fast this cooled down. If we can take off the fire door here, I'll show you some other configurations we can do with this. So, if we remove the uh, the burner ring here and we stick this back together, put our fire door back on here. It can be a little tricky to uh, get this going again, or putting it back together. I think it gets easier every time I do it, though. So now that we have our uh, basic wood burning configuration set up again, as you can see here, what we're going to do is I'll show you some options um, using tent stakes, um, small diameter tent stakes, or even a piece of tin foil. 
I'll show you how to make a shelf for something like the Vargo Triad or even our little penny stove here. Now if we take, I've got, I've just actually got some heavy gauge wire uh, instead of tent stakes, but you can use those little small titanium tent pegs, or tent stakes, to do this. Now if you look at the configuration on the side here, what you've got is these small little cutout holes in each of the levels. And what's great about those is that it not only enables you to put the level, or I'm sorry, the, the grill ring wherever you want, you can also insert your stakes right in here, or your wire, like in this situation. So now once you have your wire in, it makes it very easy to come along with something like the penny stove and place it directly in there, just like so. Now, of course, if you don't have flat ground, it could fall off, but it does give you an option to put those in there as well as something like the Vargo Triad alcohol stove. You can set that right in there as well and cook right on there. Put your top ring back on, just like so, and get your pot going again just like that. Um, and then another option, toss that back out, instead of the wire like this, you can actually take a piece of folded tin foil and shove it right into those slots. Extend it through the other side and you can bend it down and create a shelf for yourself just like that. And with that shelf Grab your penny stove again, set that in there, and burn right on that. Or take that Vargo Triad again and burn on it just like that. It obviously helps if you have stiff tin foil. I just used a piece of tin foil I folded quite a few times, um, but it does the job. So essentially, the honey stove is a very versatile stove. Um, you can take it from its hex hexagon configuration like this. Um, this is. Uh, with all the pieces that it has in it, this ring, this ring, and everything here, including the carrying case, you're looking at a total weight of about 13 ounces. Now, that's close to a pound, which, you know, may not fly for some people. So what you can do is actually just take four sides. So if we drop that bottom ring out of there, drop a side, we can actually reassemble this. those three sides, grab our fire door, said it's it can be a little tricky to assemble this sometimes all right so you got a square configuration now let's get this back on the burner plate and what you can do from here is actually put the the uh, trangia right into those slots Or again, something else, if you had the wire, you could run through here. And you could set up your stove just like so, with the Tronji burner right in there. So it's a very versatile option um, for stove. Uh, with just the four pieces here, uh, without the Tronji, you're looking at about five ounces. So does cut down the weight considerably if you're just looking for something small to use and the great thing about the the honey stove configuration like this with only four sides is it it gives you the option of taking a Tronji with you an alcohol stove and uh, the sides here act as a windscreen as well as a pot stand just like so so essentially that is the honey stove um, hopefully we covered everything that I set out to cover today but 
the thing about the honey stove is you can only get it from the UK right now. There are no US distributors of the honey stove. And if you get onto backpackinglight.co.uk, you will find the honey stove on there. Um, I'll get back with the cost. I'll put that in the actual article write up um, because you do have to pay for shipping uh, from overseas. I believe they're out of the UK somewhere, obviously, co.uk. But uh, I will get back with uh, the details in the article, so be sure to look for the write up on ITS Tactical where we'll go into detail, have some great photos. And hopefully you enjoyed our little video review on the honey stove, the bee's knees. Thanks for watching.